students and welcome to today's health science video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the structure of the skin. The skin is divided into three layers. There is the epidermis, there is the dermal layer, and the third layer is something called adipose tissue. It's also called fat stores. So those are the three layers of the skin, the outer epidermis, the dermal layer, and the adipose tissue or fat stores. The outermost layer of the skin is the epidermal layer. If you take a look at your arm, what you can see is the epidermal layer. It includes dead cells, and underneath those dead cells are living cells. As the dead cells are shed off, the living cells eventually replace the dead cells. Now underneath the living cells is where melanin is stored. And the melanin is created by special cells called melanocytes, which are located right there in the epidermal layer. Now the epidermal layer is important because it protects your body from heat, UV rays, germs, and also dangerous chemicals. And it also protects the inner, the inner layers of the skin. As we move into the second layer, which is the dermal layer, we'll see there's a variety of things there, including blood vessels. There's also nerves inside the dermal layer. And these nerves end in sensory nerve endings. So when you touch something hot and you quickly move your hand away, it's these sensory nerve endings that are attached to the nerves that help you recognize that you've touched something hot and you need to quickly move it away. And of course, the, this nerve here is connected to the nervous system. Also in the dermal area are sebaceous glands, and we can see it right there. The sebaceous glands, they produce a substance called sebum. And sebum is an oily substance that lines your hair follicles and also the outside of your skin. It's also what helps to make your skin water resistant. Here we also have sweat glands in the dermal layer. And the sweat glands are responsible for producing sweat, which travels th up through the sweat, sweat duct or the sweat tube, and it exits out through the pore there. Now something interesting that you also find in the dermal layer is muscles. Now if you notice that muscle is attached to something, it's attached to hair follicles. And that's what we got right there, hair follicles. Now sometimes when it's cold and you find that your hair just stands up on your skin, that doesn't happen by itself. That requires an actual muscle that's attached to each individual hair follicle. And the contraction and the relaxing of that muscle causes the movement of your hair follicles to come up when you're cold and to come back down when you're warm again. I also mentioned that there are blood vessels right here, and those blood vessels, they're responsible for the movement of nutrients and oxygen and deoxygenated blood throughout your body, particularly in the area of your skin. And any nutrients that's passed through the blood is then diffused up into the epidermal layer. Now, a third layer that we'll look at is the adipose tissue or the fat stores. And this layer contains just that, it contains fat, and also a supply of blood vessels. This layer is responsible for insulating your body from extreme temperatures. And if you live in cold temperatures, there would be much more fat accumulated in your body around this area. But if you live in the Bahamas, there wouldn't be as much excess fat stores in this area. And so those are the three main layers of the skin.